Okay, good morning and welcome to today's, I should say good afternoon and welcome to today's finance committee hearing where we will be adopting the fiscal 2022 budget. I'm council member Daniel Drum and I chair the committee on finance. It is such a pleasure to be here with my colleagues in person for the first time in over 15 months. We are joined today by council members Powers, Gordenchik, Adams, Van Bramer, Brooks Powers, Matteo, Moya, Cumbo, Rosenthal, Koslowitz, Dharma Diaz, Gibson, Cornegie, Amphrey Samuel. Today, the Finance Committee will take the necessary actions for the City Council to adopt the fiscal 2022 budget, which totals approximately $98.7 billion. In all, this committee will vote on 22 items today. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge Quiet in the chambers, quiet in the chambers. If everyone could please take their seat. We are in the middle of the finance meeting. Thank you again. Quiet in the chambers, especially in the back. Thank you. Uh, before we begin, I would like to acknowledge that this will be my last budget as chair of the finance committee. Throughout these past four years, it has been an extraordinary honor and privilege to serve as the council's finance chair, and I couldn't have done it without the support of so many people who I would like to thank today. First and foremost, I want to thank Speaker Corey Johnson for his stewardship of this body and leadership over the past four years. The Speaker's commitment and dedication to advocate for a budget year after year that truly represents the values of this council and of the people of this city is inspiring. I want to thank the Speaker's Chief of Staff, Jason Goldman, and his Deputy Chief of Staff, Ebony Meeks, for all their work throughout the negotiation process and for all they do for each and every one of us. Thank you to my fellow Finance Committee members for their partnership, in particular, Council Member Helen Rosenthal, who chairs the Subcommittee on Capital Budget. Together, we spent many, many hours listening to testimony from the agencies virtually this year at the Executive Budget hearings, especially on the last day when we heard from over 290 dedicated members of the public. I'd also like to recognize Council Member Vanessa Gibson, who I had the pleasure of working with in this role for the last three budgets. And of course, I would like to thank the incredibly hardworking staff of the Council's Finance Division. I know that they were, that they were long hours, a lot of questions from the members, and so many spreadsheets. And all of this work was done while telecommuting and juggling your family and personal responsib responsibilities. Your dedication is recognized and very much appreciated. So thank you to all of the financial analysts, economists, and administrative support staff who got us to this vote today. And a very special thank you to the Finance Division's leadership team who spearheaded this effort. Deputy Director Regina Pareda Ryan, Deputy Director Nathan Toth, Deputy Director Paul Simone, Deputy Director and Chief Economist Dr. Ray Majowski, Deputy Director Emra Eddev, Supervising Economist Paul Sturm, Unit Heads Isha Wright, Doheny Sampora, Chima Obacheri, Krillian Francisco, and John Russell, and Senior Counsel Rebecca Chasen. And of course, a resounding thank you to the Finance Division's Director, Latanya McKinney, for her amazing leadership. None of this budget successes uh, we, would have, we have achieved during this tenure would have been possible without the committed efforts of you and your staff. It's been a pleasure working with you. Thank you to Chuck Davis and Fran Della Vecchia and the appointments and investigations team for vetting every organization receiving discretionary funding and to the entire office of the general counsel for assisting us with our disclosures. Thank you to all of the sergeants and behind the scenes staff who were able to pivot so quickly to get us set up for our first in-person meeting today. And last but not least, a special shout out to my staff for all that you do, in particular to Robin Forst, uh, who, was my, who was by my side every step of the way this budget season. Now let's move forward with adopting this budget. What a difference a year makes. Last year, we passed the budget at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic and the resulting sudden economic crisis. Everything felt so uncertain and we didn't know when or how things would improve. Even at the release of the preliminary budget in January, the city's financial picture seemed bleak, but thanks to the incredible leadership of Majority Leader Chuck Schumer 
and the entire New York congressional delegate, delegation, we have seen our fortunes turn around. The influx of approximately $15 billion in federal aid has allowed the city to plan and invest in its recovery. However, I am proud that over the last four years, regardless of the city's financial circumstances, this council has been steadfast mm -hmm. to its commitment to equity, protecting the social safety net, and as the speaker likes to say, doing the most good for those who need it the most. This year is no different. As our beloved city emerges from the havoc wreaked by COVID-19, the fiscal 2022 budget is the opportunity to rebuild, recover, and reimagine the city in a far more uh, fair and equitable way. Because of this body's tenacity and negotiations, the fiscal 2022 budget includes significant investments in key areas towards this goal. We are making historic investments in education to help put our students back on track after a difficult year of remote learning, specifically with $650 million for the first time ever to fully fund every school with 100% of their fair student funding, $500 million to reverse student learning loss with academic supports, including small group tutoring, $160 million for universal summer school, $19.7 million to restore the college access for all program. $20 million for the citywide literacy curriculum program, $18 million for a class size reduction program, $2.8 million for the LGBT curriculum, and $9 million to make our community schools whole, and $5 million to fund 10 additional community schools. We are making sure that our neighbors don't go hungry with $25 million for fresh food and community-based pantries. We are making our parks, which so many people rely on, relied on this past year by investing 25 million to do things like hire 150 park maintenance workers, hire 80 park enforcement patrol officers, restore 15 green thumb staff, and hire 50 urban park rangers. We are keeping our streets clean with $8.6 million for additional litter basket collection. We are honoring our libraries and cultural institutions by restoring $10.3 million and $30 million respectively in previously announced cuts. We are getting CUNY students on track to help them graduate by investing $10 million to maintain ASAP and $1.7 million for the remediation program. We are supporting our human service providers by funding a one-time bonus totaling $24 million. We are protecting the LGBTQ community with a $4.7 million investment in the LGBT Community Services Initiative and $3.3 million for the Trans Equity Initiative. We are setting up our youth for success by ensuring that our summer rising providers are adequately funded with a $24 million rate increase and baselining $12 million for the Fair Futures Program. And the council is creating four new initiatives, a $10 million education equity action plan initiative to support the creation of a black studies curriculum, a $2.5 million adult literacy pilot initiative to further support English language learners in their first year of the recovery, a $500,000 five borough chamber alliance initiative to support small businesses and a $4 million Asian Pacific Islander Community Support Initiative to combat anti-Asian hate and support communities. And the best news is that we are doing all of this while being fiscally responsible and saving to ensure that New York City of the future is financially sound. This past year, we confirmed what we already knew. Having robust reserves is critical to avoiding the need for draconian cuts to vital services during an economic turndown, downturn. After dipping into our reserves last year, the council is thrilled that the city is now in place to start rebuilding them back up again. We will set aside $500 million in the city's newly created rainy day fund in case it is needed in the future. I, for one, am extremely pleased to vote in favor of this budget, my last one as a New York City Council member, and I hope my colleagues feel the same way. Before we get to the vote, I'd like to discuss the specific items that we will vote on today. 
Finance Committee members were emailed a budget packet by the committee council that contains all the budget related legislation that must be voted on by the committee and again by the full council at the stated meeting. A description of all the items was also emailed to you. So I'm going to just list the items that are on our agenda today that require a vote. The first item is the resolution adopting the fiscal 2022 expense budget. The second item is the resolution adopting the fiscal 2022 contract budget. The third item is Reso A for the fiscal 2022 capital budget, approving the schedule of changes for the capital budget since the executive budget, including council discretionary allocations. The fourth item is Reso B for the fiscal 2022 capital budget, which is approved, which is the, which is approved, which is the approval of the capital budget as amended by Reso A. The fifth item is the resolution to approve the annual amendment to the fiscal 2020 2024 five year education capital plan. The sixth item is the resolution approving the 48th year of the community development program and the 47th year reallocations. The seventh, eighth, and ninth items are three resolutions necessary to fix the property tax rates for fiscal 2022. The tenth item is the resolution approving an expense budget modification for fiscal 2021. The 11th item is the resolution approving a revenue bud budget modification for fiscal 2021. And the 12th item is a transparency resolution. We will also vote on several non-budget pieces of legislation, including the 13th, 14th, and 15th items, which are three resolutions necessary to fix the property tax late payment interest rates for fiscal 2022. The 16th, 17th, 18th, and 19th items, which are two local laws and their accompanying resolutions setting lower property tax late payment interest rates for certain property owners adversely affected by COVID-19. And the 20th, 21st, and 22nd items, which are Article 11 property tax exemptions. The other documents that were emailed to you, which do not require a separate vote are Schedule C, a list of the terms and conditions adopted for fiscal 2022 and the borough president proposed changes. As a reminder to members, Schedule C is a schedule of the expense and contract budgets and the appropriations for the organization listed, organizations listed in Schedule C are funded by the expense and contract budgets. Council members will have to sign a disclosure form indicating whether or not a conflict exists with any of the groups listed in Schedule C or Reso A, which details the designations of capital discretionary funds. A separate disclosure form must be completed for the transparency resolution. If any council member has a potential conflict of interest with any of the organizations included, he or she has the opportunity to disclose the conflict at the time of their vote. If you have not yet signed those disclosure forms, staff from the general counsel's office are available to guide you through the process. So please contact one of them before you vote. As a further reminder, please disclose any conflicts you may have with proposed subcontractors that are used by any of the organizations sponsored. These disclosures must be made before the subcontractor can be, can be approved. Those are all of today's items. I will now have Billy Martin, the committee clerk, call the roll. Thank you. Good afternoon. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on finance. All items as described by the chair are coupled. Chair Drum. I vote aye. Kozlowitz. I vote aye. Thank you, Councilman. Van Bramer. I am disclosing on the record of the council proceedings that breaking ground is funded in the budget we are adopting and my sister Dawn Bartholomeos is associated with this entity uh, and I will explain my vote at the stated but I am voting aye on all with the exception of M300 and the accompanying Reso 1699 and 1700, which I vote no on. Thank you.
Thank you. Council Member Gibson. Permission to explain? Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, and good afternoon, colleagues. Um, I want to join with our amazing finance chair, Danny Drum, and really recognizing the incredible work of the entire finance division, led by our very own Olivia Pope. Latanya McKinney and all of the unit heads and analysts that really worked so hard. Um, this is my final budget as a member of this body, and I'm extremely proud of how far we have come. This recovery budget is truly reflective of all of the priorities that we care about, the investments that we're making in so many areas that Chair Drum talked about truly reflects exactly what New Yorkers need. And after last year's budget, when we had a nine billion dollar loss in revenue, a $7 billion deficit, and we had no federal and no state support, it was extremely painful making those decisions where a lot of our initiatives were cut. And now this year with the infusion of state dollars and federal dollars, as well as all of the enhancements that we've made to council priorities, I am really proud. Um, our communities have been hurt and devastated by the impact of COVID-19. New Yorkers of color, low-income families have seen their lives turned upside down, and we've seen instability like never before. When you talk about eviction prevention and stable housing and quality health care and programs for youth and families and children and veterans and seniors, that's exactly what New Yorkers need. And so we are doing what we need to do to fulfill our purpose and the roles that we have given to make a difference in the lives of our constituents and especially the young people. I represent one of those districts in the city that has faced an increase in crime. And I am continuously standing with parents as their children are either assaulted or shot by gun violence. So when you talk about anti gun violence and crisis management, these programs make a difference. Giving a young person a job transforms their life and that's exactly what this budget is doing. So I am proud and I'm thankful for the finance division and everyone, the Sergeant at Arms and all of my colleagues, all of the caucuses certainly wanna recognize the Women's Caucus because we have championed issues around maternal health, dealing with maternal mortality and infant mortality that is so prevalent with women of color and the BLAC that is championing issues that affect so many communities of color. So thank you colleagues and Chair Drum, it's been an honor to work with you, my partner, my friend. Um, I appreciate all the time we've spent together. All of the Zooms have been worth it because at the end of the day, we get to say well done on this budget. Thank you so much. And I am proud to vote aye on today's agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Gibson. Carnegie. I want to thank uh, Chair Drum for his hard work, Latanya McKinney, uh, the entire finance staff. Uh, I vote aye. Thank you. Combo. I vote aye. Thank you. Rosenthal. I apologize. I would like to read my disclosure, but Councilmember Rosenthal, you can still come forward. It'll take me one moment. I am disclosing on the record of the council proceedings that the New York City Department of Education and PS 235 is funded in the budget we are adopting, and my sister Michelle Cumbo is employed by this entity, and I vote aye. Councilmember Rosenthal. Thank you, um, Majority Leader. I'm proud to vote aye on this budget with immense gratitude to our finance chair, Danny Drum to Latanya McKinney and her entire staff, and to our speaker, Corey Johnson, who led us to this incredible place where we are really the meeting the needs of all New Yorkers. Thank you. Gordenchik. I vote aye, and I, I do wanna thank my dear friend of 30 years, Danny Drum, um, for leading us it's been a tumultuous time. Um, so many of us have not been back in this building just until this moment. And um, it's special to be back here and to be uh, honored to be a member of this council. And with that, I vote aye on all. And I have 
nothing to disclose. You know, everything there is to know about me. <laughs> Thank you, Council Member Gredenche. Adams. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you to our awesome chair, uh, Council Member Danny Drum, and thank you to our amazing finance team led by the amazing, as my colleagues said, our Olivia Pope, Latanya McKinney. I am disclosing on the record of the council proceedings that Pearls and Ivy Foundation of Queens is funded in the budget we are adopting, and I am associated with this entity. In addition, uh, Allen Senior Center is funded in the budget we're adopting, and I am associated with this nonprofit via membership with my church. Thank you very much. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Ambry Samuel. I am disclosed on the record of the council proceeding that New York City Department of Education is funded in the budget we are adopting and my brother is employed with this entity and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Moya. Thank you, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Powers. I am disclosing on the record of the council proceedings that Mount Sinai Hospital is funded in the budget we are adopting and my mother is associated with this entity. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I'm voting aye on the budget and I wanna say a very big thank you to the entire staff here at the city council who has worked overtime over the last few weeks and my members of the BNT as well, where we don't always see it eye to eye and everything, but we do get to a budget that we all can agree on and we can feel proud about. And I think this year, after a very difficult year last year, it was nice to have the support from the federal government and to have more funding to go back to programs that we all so deeply care about. So I wanna say a very thank, big thank you to all those who sat in those weekend uh, Zooms trying to get to a good place on this budget. I do want to say, and I want to say it now, since we're going to be, I think, quite busy at the stated, is a very big thank you and a very big shout out to our chair of the Finance Committee, Danny Drum, who has done a spectacular job over the last few years in making sure that we get the budgets that we deserve, even when they're hard. It's not always easy, and I don't think we all see how many hours he puts into this. Uh, weekends, nights, and long hearings throughout that, but this is his last budget. I want to make sure he gets the proper shout out that he deserves, as well as Councilmember Rosenthal as well, and all the folks here who's, this may be their last budget, but their legacy in this budget will be felt for years into the future. So very big thank you to all of them. And of course, I vote aye. Well said. Thank you so much. Dharma Diaz. All righty, let's try to figure this one out. No conflict to disclose <laughs> other than being vertically challenged. <laughs> um, thank you, Chair Drum and all from the fiscal unit that put this together. As a junior member, I came on in the middle of chaos, willing to serve, and in my heart of hearts, I knew the city could recover if we put monies where they've been put. Someone that is big on mental health, education, and housing, criminal justice, I'm proud to vote yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilmember Diaz. Your passion is felt. Brooks Powers. I am disposing on the record of the council proceedings that Martin DePore's Youth and Family Services is funded in the budget we are adopting and my sister is employed by this entity. Also, Allen Senior Center is funded in the budget we are adopting and via my membership with the church, I am associated with this nonprofit. 
I'd also like to just congratulate uh, Chair Drum for this budget and all of the hard work that you put forward in getting us to this day, along with the staff for the Finance Committee and the speaker staff who have been tremendously helpful to me um, as I am preparing to vote on my very first budget as a council member. And so I am so thankful for the support that my staff along with myself have been afforded and I vote aye, thank you. Mario. Thank you. I'm disclosing on the record that the College of Staten Island is funded in the budget and my son is associated with CSI. PS30 is also funded in the budget we adopted and my other sons attend the school. Um, as for the budget, I'm going to be voting no today um, because I think spending is too high. I think it's going in the wrong direction. But with that said, in my last budget, I do want to thank the finance team. We've always um, helped and been with me on my local initiatives. And to Danny, we may not always agree, but we've had a mutual respect, worked together. And uh, I think that's what's most important. And while we don't agree on most of this budget, I do appreciate you working with me on all my local initiatives. So thank you um, and, and, and well done uh, for you. So I'm going to vote yes on Reso 1708, 815, 1709 and 816, 1710 and 817 intro 2350 and accompanying 1698 and no on the rest. Thank you. And Mr. Minority Leader, I just wanna thank you also for taking over on a couple of occasions when I couldn't be here and I couldn't think of anybody better to do that. Thank, thank you, you very much. One moment. Today's finance agenda, proposed introduction 2350A and Preconsidered resolution to adopt interest rate of 0% with three preconsidered land use items have been adopted by the committee 15 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstention. M300 and accompanying resolutions have been adopted by the committee 13 in the affirmative, two in the negative, zero abstentions. And all other items coupled on the finance agenda have been adopted by the committee 14 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions. Okay, thank you very much. And with that, this meeting is adjourned at um, 1.14 in the afternoon. Thank you very much.